Mahalo to HawaiiActivities.com for sponsoring this video. Half a mile. That's about two laps around a track. Did you know on Oahu you can zip line for half of a mile plus have gorgeous ocean views? In this video, we're checking out Climbworks zip line on the North Shore of Oahu. Climbworks is home to Oahu's tallest and longest zip line. We'll check out what to expect, options, what to wear and pack, how to get there, and a review. Timestamps are in the description box, so feel free to skip around the video for the parts that you came here for. First off, what to expect. This is a guided zip line tour that runs about three hours and it is one of my favorites. You start off jumping in an ATV with your guide to head up to the ridge top. It's about a 10 minute drive. On the way up, your guide will point out some highlights and then you start your first zip line. You're zip lining above a working agricultural farm. For this reason, you won't be able to carry any backpacks or bags. They do have small lockers to lock up your valuables. If you need medication, make sure to let your guide know ahead of time. If you're going to bring a cell phone or a GoPro to take photos, make sure it has some sort of wrist strap. This video was filmed with my GoPro Hero 10 and I'll leave a link in the description box below for everything that I used. There are eight dual line zips, which means you're gonna be zipping side by side, two at a time. This is perfect if you wanna take photos or if you wanna race. You start small at about 500 feet of zip line and it gradually builds up and then you zip to half of a mile. We are on zip line number five and we're gonna go about 1,500 feet and this is the second longest zip line here at the course. In between the platforms, you're going to be doing some short hikes and there are stairs to get to some of the platforms. There's also some sky bridges. So we have finished five zip lines and we're on to the suspension bridge. We have one over here and then a second bridge over there and then at the very top is gonna to be the sixth zip line that we're heading down today. We just passed our second suspension bridge and we're heading to the next zip line. We just finished the longest zip line of the course, which is about half of a mile long, and it goes pretty fast. So we're heading up a few more flights of stairs and then we're heading to, I believe it's zip line number seven, and there's eight total, so we got a couple more left to go. <sighs> Whoever said zip line isn't strenuous, no, the actual zip line itself is not strenuous, but going from platform to platform can be strenuous. We have gone up bunch of stairs oh boy. and you have ocean views for most of the course throughout the zipline tour our guide was giving us bits of Hawaiian history and because it's above a working agricultural farm we got to try some of the things that they grew here at the farm on the day that we went we tried these macadamia nuts so just when you think you're done you're going to take a leap of faith <laughs> Next, let's go over some options. There are morning zip lines and afternoon zip lines. The morning ones are great if you want to zip line without there being too much sun. You'll also have the entire afternoon free if you want to head over to the North Shore town of Haleiwa. Check out this video for nine things to do on the North Shore if you're looking for more ideas on what you can do on the North Shore of Oahu. The afternoon zip lines work really well if you want to sleep in a little bit or if you're pairing it with another activity. We did the zip line at 1.20 p.m. because we were pairing it with the shark cage dive earlier that morning. But if you do choose to do the the afternoon zip line like we did, make sure to wear plenty of sunscreen and definitely reapply before you go on the course. You're 100% outdoors, there is no shade, and the afternoon times are the hottest part of the day. I would also recommend wearing or bringing sunglasses. Next, what to wear or pack. Closed toe shoes are required for the zip line, so make sure to wear or pack them. As for what to wear, I wore my regular leggings and a tank top. I unfortunately did forget to bring my running shoes as I was leaving my apartment, but they do have rentals. It was only $5 to rent some closed toe shoes. Throughout the tour, there's camera is set up at really scenic points to take photos, plus the guides are also taking photos for you as well. These digital photos, you can opt to purchase them at the end of the tour if you'd like. You can bring your own camera or cell phone as long as it's secured. This is also for the overall safety of those that are on the zip lines, depending on where you are and anyone traveling underneath the zip lines too. I brought my GoPro with a wrist strap and I also had a small carabiner, that way I could keep my hands free for most of the course. This was the perfect setup. I didn't have to worry about dropping my GoPro and because it was clipped on, I knew it was secure. I'll leave a link in the description box below for the carabiner that I used to clip on my GoPro. Have you been ziplining before? If so, what is one tip you wished you would have known before the zipline? Comment down below and share with us. Next, how do you get there? At the time of this filming, Climbworks does not currently offer shuttle service. The easiest way to get to Climbworks 
is by rental car. If you're staying on the North Shore at Turtle Bay Resort, it's only about 10 minutes drive or about four and a half miles. If you're staying on the west side at Ko'olina, it's about 50 miles from Ko'olina to the zipline course. Similarly, if you're staying in Waikiki, it's about 40 to 50 miles, depending on if you cut through the center of the island or go along the east coast. From Waikiki without traffic, it should take you about an hour and 15 minutes. But traffic on Oahu can be very unpredictable, especially if there's any accidents, any road work. So always give yourselves ample time. That way you don't have to rush or worry about missing the zipline. This is especially important if you decide to cut through the island and go to the zipline course via Haleiwa and going up to Kahuku. This is a great option if you wanted to get up to the zipline course a little bit early, grab a quick light bite to eat, and be in the right area only a mile down the road. Overall, I absolutely love this course. I would definitely recommend it. There were varying ages on the tour itself. Keep in mind that you're going to be on your feet for about two to three hours, so you should only do the course if you're able to comfortably stand for about three hours. You should also be able to comfortably walk up a few flights of stairs because there are going to be a few set of stairs between the platforms. There are specific age minimum and weight restrictions. I'll leave a link in the description box below.